In today's video, I'll be showing you how to create your very own website using Wix. Wix is a great platform for beginners or people that are not necessarily that tech savvy, but you still want to have your own website. So if you're running your own business or if you want to have a website for your portfolio or your CV online, or if you want to just have a website for something, I don't know, a project you have or whatever it is, this will be the best tutorial for you to watch if you want to have your website live in a short time so i'll be showing you everything you need to know throughout the whole process of this video i'll be showing you how to create your account on vix how to set up your website how to pick your domain and then how to publish your website live so your customers or your friends can go ahead and visit your website because it will be ready by the end of this video and if you want to learn more about VIX and other VIX features, such as how to get more traffic towards your website, then make sure you head over to my channel here on YouTube, where you can watch a bunch of other videos on Wix as well. But hopefully you guys enjoy and make sure you watch the video throughout to understand all of the steps. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions by the end of the video on anything that I go through, because I'm happy to answer the questions that you have. Now, with that being said, let's just jump into today's video and hopefully you guys do enjoy. Okay, so the very first thing you wanna do is just make sure you click the top link in the video description. And by doing so, you'll land on this page right here or it'll look similar to this. Now, keep in mind, this is in Swedish just because I'm in Sweden right now. So we'll just automatically translate but it will look similar to this. So just make sure you click the top link in the video description and you will land somewhere like this. Now, the first thing you wanna do is pretty straightforward. Just click the button, which will say click here to start or something like that, which it says right here. So just go ahead and click on that button right now. Once you've clicked on that button, you're just gonna go ahead and create your account itself. The, these steps are very straightforward and I already have my own account, so I'm just gonna log into my account. But what you can do here is just make sure you sign up using your email or you can use your Google account or your Facebook. Whatever option you choose, it doesn't really matter, but just make sure you create an account here and follow the all, all the steps needed. Once you have created your account, you will see something like this. So which platform do you want to use? Now we have the option of choosing between Wix and Editor X. Wix is kind of like the old platform that Wix used to use or the, the, the old product of Wix essentially. While Editor X is gonna be the more advanced, the newer version and the more modern version of Wix. If I were you, I would go with Editor X and I'm gonna uh, use Editor X for this tutorial. But you can also go ahead and use Wix if you want, although the tutorial will be a bit different. So if you want a tutorial on Wix specifically, make sure to let me know in the comments and I'll make a follow-up video on Wix specifically. But today we're gonna take a look at Editor X. So just make sure you click Editor X and we are gonna go to the next step. So on the next step, we are able to choose either a template for our website. So we can use a pre-made template from Wix. So as you can see, we have a bunch of different templates here. We have one for SAS companies, beauty store, digital agency, financial, uh, financial company, uh, maybe gaming startup. So if you find something here that is kind of related to what you do, I mean, you can go ahead and use that template straight away. That will make it a lot easier for you. But you can also go ahead and just start with a blank canvas. And that way you're gonna have to create the whole website from scratch, basically everything you have to do it. For this tutorial, we're gonna use a template because it will make it a lot easier for us. And if you're just getting started, I do recommend you to use a template because it will make sure that you don't ruin the website with some of the more common, common mistakes for beginners. Because there's a lot of things you have to take into account when you create a website. You have to make sure that the spacing is correct. You have to make sure that everything flows perfectly within the website. You have to make sure that it's optimized for user experience. A lot of those things will take a long time to learn. So I always recommend new people that are creating maybe their first or maybe their second website to go with a template and then just edit the template so it looks the way that you want it to look. And then you can make kind of more, more advanced changes further along because you will always make changes to your website. You're not, you're not just gonna make changes once, you will always keep doing changes. Anyway, uh, too much talking. So what we're gonna do here is just pick one. So if you find one that's related to whatever you are doing, go ahead and pick those. Otherwise, you can just pick one that you think looks the best because you can also change everything on the website. So even though it says financial company here, this could be for a pizza shop. So it doesn't really matter. Just pick the theme that you think looks the best and then just go with that one. 
In my example, I'm going to go with the, the theme right here, the template right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click edit. Once the Wix editor or the Wix editor X has loaded up, it will look something like this. You'll have this brief introduction, which you don't necessarily need to walk through because you're watching this video. But all you need to know here is that this is where you're going to edit your website. So every time you edit your website, you will come to this editor right here. So it's very important that you get used to everything in here and make sure you know what all of the different buttons do. So to start off, we have a very simple button here at the top, which we can switch from a desktop view. So this is how our website will look on desktop. We can go to tablet view. So this is how our website will look on tablets or smaller screens. We can also go ahead and click on mobile to see how the website will look on mobile phones. And as you can see, the website already looks great. This website looks amazing. And that's why you should be using uh, templates if you're just starting out, because creating something like this will take you hours upon hours on hours. And unless you want to spend all that time to learn and figure out, templates are going to be the best way to go. Anyway, with that being said, when you edit your website, usually I start from editing the desktop version. And once you've made changes to the desktop version, then you can go ahead and make sure that those changes also look good on tablet as well as mobile, because that's going to be super important. And also remember that you always have to edit mobile and tablet as well, because if you make, uh, make a lot of changes on your desktop version and you don't change it on the mobile version, it might look totally different on mobile and the whole experience might be ruined. So if your customers go on your website, they won't be able to see anything because it's all just in the wrong place and wrong sizing and whatever. So make sure you edit those as well. But starting out, we have a very simple features in Wix. So everything you can see here is editable. So if I hover over everything, you can see that it kind of highlights each individual element. So for the title here, for example, you can see I can just go ahead and click the text itself. And then we get additional settings here on the side as well as up here as well. So what can we do with this text? Well, essentially what we can do, we could just go ahead and just change the text straight away. So we can change this title to whatever we want. So if I wanted to do who is Baba and YouTube channel right here, I can do so. It's a bit short is the best. Um, we can just go ahead and change the text itself. Now, maybe you're not too big of a fan of the color right here, or perhaps the font of the website. So we can actually go ahead and change those things as well. But the best way of doing that is actually not going to be from the settings here on the side. Although you can go ahead and change the colors here individually. So perhaps I want this title to be, let's say I highlight the whole text and I want it to be pink. I can go ahead and do that. As you can see, the text is now pink. I can also go ahead and change the font that we're using. Perhaps I want to use, um, let's see here, Rail Railway Semi Bold. Let's go ahead and use that one. So everything just updates automatically, which is super nice. I can just go ahead and change the size here as well if I want to. Everything super straightforward, making it bold, making the text italic, yeah, underline the text. All of the settings are right here. But now, if I want to change the colors, it might be a bit annoying to go ahead and change all the colors individually. So the best way to do it is going to be through your site styles here at the top. So if we just deviate for a few minutes here and click on site styles, we can see that we have some already preset headings and sizes and fonts for all individual texts. But if we want to go ahead and change it, we can do it right here. So as we can see, our title is currently pink, but if we go ahead and go to our heading, I'm going to assume this is going to be a heading one, but I'm going to double check. It's a heading four. So you can see here in the theme, this is a heading four theme. But if we go back to our site styles and our heading four, let's see heading four, it's here. Now, if you click on edit typography here, we can actually change the font. So if I change something here, then all the text on the website that is marked as heading four will follow the same design as this. So this will make it a lot easier to make sure that all the different titles and all the different text elements on your website is following the same structure, has the same design, has the same color. So that is the basics of what we're doing here. 
So let's say we want all the text on our website to be Roboto Bold. I can just pick the font right here. You also have the size option and then the color option. I want it to be, let's go with uh, this purple right here. And then I can just go ahead and click apply. Now that will change for all the text except for this one because I already individually changed this one. But I can just go ahead and refit it like this, heading four. And there you go. So the text is following what we just changed. Now what we want to do in here is do the same thing for all our different texts. So for our headings, we can change all of them. And then for the text down here, we can just go ahead and change that as well. It's going to be the paragraph one, paragraph two, or paragraph three. So we can just go ahead and change all of those individually just to make sure that everything looks the way we want it to. Same thing goes for colors on the website. So as you can see, we have the colors options here. This is our current colors that we have, our action colors. And then we also have the background and text. So you can see this is our background color of the website. If I wanted our background color on the website to be, let's say white, I can just go ahead and change it here to white. I can change it to whatever color else I wanted to as well. I can also go ahead and just change the whole color palette. So if I wanted to have a specific color, let's say our brand color is more of a red or pinkish color, I can just go ahead and change it here. And this will give us a breakdown of all the different colors that matches our main color of the brand. So that will kind of make everything align overall. Action colors, we can do the same thing. If I wanted it to be, let's say, pink as well. Now this is going to be awful because everything is just different colors. We can go ahead and change it here as well. Now I'm just showing you this as an example. You can see it doesn't look great. So if I want to undo something, I can just press Control and Z uh, on my keyboard and that will just go back to where, to where we were. Cool. So that is it for colors. Then we finally we have page transitions. This is basically a short animation that will show once you go from one page on the website to another page. It's not usually necessary. I usually have it to none, but if you want to keep it, you can keep it as well. It just makes it looks a little bit better when you transition from one page to another. Uh, but that is basically it. So make sure you go through here and check that everything is following the same fonts. The main important thing here is that remember that you should only be using one or two fonts on your website. Usually you have one font, so just one font for all your text on the website, or in some cases you have one font for headings, so big titles like this one, and you have another font for your paragraphs or your uh, smaller texts. Because usually, or sometimes you can have a font for your big titles, that doesn't really look that good for smaller text. So sometimes you have two different fonts, but usually try to keep it to one. And never have more than three. Three just looks awful. And also adds, uh, makes the website harder to load actually. So it has an impact on your overall performance. Uh, but cool, that's kind of like the basics of changing colors. So I would recommend you to do it this way and not changing it individually like I just did here. Uh, now moving on to our website, we have some other things in here. You can see we have our text and our buttons. All of them kind of work the same way. I can click on each individual element and I'll get all the more detailed settings here on the side. For the buttons, the same thing. If I click it, I have the more advanced settings here on the side. We have the regular color here, for example. And then we have the hover option. So when someone is hovering over this button, it will actually look like this. So that's kind of like a neat feature that you have. But if you want to change it, perhaps when someone hovers, this button is actually going to turn a different color. Let's say pink, just to make it a bit more visible for you. So this is how it looks. And when someone hovers over the button, it'll look like this. There's also a bunch of other things you can change in here. You can add borders to your buttons. You can add corners, so make it more rounded. Or if you want it to be more square, if I add this radius here to zero, it's going to be just completely square. Uh, well, it doesn't really look that good. I usually keep these at about 25. I think that looks a bit better. Uh, then for shadows, obviously that will just add kind of like a drop shadow to your button. So if you want to add that, you can do it here as well. Then you can change the angle of the shadow. 
You can also change the distance. You can also change the size of the shadow. You can change the blur as well as the color of this shadow as well. Now I'm just going to undo that. Uh, the text itself, so this will follow, as I said already, uh, what we did in our site styles. So it's going to follow this, the theme or theme style for paragraph one, which will be in this one up here. Paragraph one it will follow this one here. So if I wanted to change this text in the button, instead of changing it, each individual button, I would just go ahead and change it here instead, just to make sure it looks better and you don't have to do it for each individual button. Cool, that's it for text. Going down, we also have spacing, so you can add vertical spacing as well as, um, I'm not entirely sure why we have two vertical spacing here. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and ignore that one for now. Uh, but yeah, we have spacing options down here. It doesn't really seem to do anything either way. Anyway, going over to interactions, this is something that's actually in beta right now, but you can have trigger buttons. So trigger buttons is gonna be a bit advanced, but you can actually add uh, specific things either on click or on hover. So let's say we add this on click. So when someone clicks this button, something will happen. Now, what will happen? Well, we get to pick ourselves. Let's say we have an effect element, which right now is get started, but we can also choose one on canvas. Let's say this one right here, done. So our title here, who is Bob on YouTube channel is the best, is gonna have an applied effect and the effect we want to happen is, let's say grow. And now you can change the effect itself in here. And then we can just go ahead and click done once we've done that. Now, if we publish the website and click this button, you will see what I just did. So if we publish it, uh, my site four, that's perfect. Then we can just go ahead and look at the website real quick. Now, if I click this button, what will happen? So the text just grew. Now the button is also connected, so it will take me somewhere. So it doesn't really make sense that it's gonna grow. But that's kind of like the basics of what this interactions thing does or this trigger does. And you can obviously do a bunch of other things on here as well. Uh, actually, they have a quick preview button here, that's new. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I didn't have to publish a website. You can also preview it here. Uh, but yeah, we can add other things in here. We can do sync, for example. We can just go back and we can preview. So the text kind of goes down. We can also change it instead of being click. Uh, we can do hover. So when someone hovers over this one, perhaps our title uh, will have an effect. So we can choose again, this one, done, apply an effect. And then we're gonna make this one spin, why not? Click done, we can go back and just preview. So now when someone hovers over this button, it will do this instead. Cool. That's the basics of uh, interactions or triggers. So you can do with this whatever you want. You can be creative uh, with this. Now jumping over to effects, we can also add effects to our buttons. So effects is basically you can create your own effects of what will happen. So we can make it either custom, but I'm just gonna make something simple. So let's say grow here and then we can make our own settings in here and this will be saved. Now, if we go back to triggers, we can add a trigger on click and then we can actually apply our custom effect in here. So let's start with get started. Yeah, let's just say our button in this case. We wanna apply an effect and then the effect we want to do is grow one. This is the one I just created. So if I just do that one and we can preview. So when someone hovers over the button, it will just grow. Cool. But as you can see, there's a lot of things you can do in these effects controls. So there's a lot of different things you can do with it. So just make sure if there's something you're doing, you have the option here to actually create some cool interactions as well. Uh, scrolling down, let's see if we have another interesting element I just wanna go through real quick. Let's say an image, we haven't walked through images, but images works the same way. You click the image, you can see that we have the settings here on the side as always. We can go ahead and change this image if we wanted to. We also have some additional settings, but let's just go ahead and click change image real quick. Let's say I wanted to change this into a hamburger, uh, which is also transparent, that would be great. So let's see if we can find a transparent. Let's do illustrations, because illustrations are transparent. And we do have a hamburger, not a lot of options, but what's great about the Wix is that they do have a lot of images. As you see, if I just do all, 
images. We actually have a lot of options here. And all of these images are free to use. So it makes it a lot easier if you're on a budget because you don't have to hire a photographer. You can, in some cases, you can just get away with using all of these free images. So now I just changed this image to this hamburger. Now it doesn't look great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do control C. But adding images on your website is just that easy. You can go ahead and change images and just adding the ones that you want to use instead. I would recommend that you're always using the same size as the original image, just to make sure they fits the template that you're using. Other than that, you can go ahead and do whatever you want with these. Now jumping over to settings, there's gonna be some additional settings for this specific image. So we can adjust this image. This will add a lot of additional settings. So as you can see, Wix is so in depth. It has a lot of levels to website design itself. There are so many things you can do. You can even jump in here and just change the sharpness of this image if you wanted to. Let's say you're an eye doctor, this will be great. Perhaps you wanna show like a vision test that you can do like first this eyeball and then you can do one that's like super clear. I don't know, just something I thought about right now. Uh, you can change the color saturation on here. You can change the grain on these images. Whatever you want to do, you have all the options here. You can even enhance the image. You can crop and resize it. You can cut out, you can add filters on here, overlays, you can add text and backgrounds, so many different things. Nothing I want to do right now, just wanted to show you briefly, but as you can see, it's very straightforward. You can just click which one you want. And then once you have changed something, you just go ahead and click save here in the corner. And once it is saved, all the changes will be live on. Uh, the page itself. Cool, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close this. I'm just gonna click leave. And in here we have some additional settings so we can display mode. So we can either fill the bounding box, so this whole box here, or we can fit to bounding box, or we can keep image ratio, which will essentially keep uh, the ratio of the image itself. In case you have something that's getting skewed on the website, keeping the image ratio will make sure that the image is not stretched either uh, up or sideways. So you have those options here as well. Uh, when the image is clicked, so you have options for that. You can open a link, for example, you can make this uh, image linkable. Usually I don't really make images linkable, but you have the option here. So if you wanted to, you can click make it linkable. You can either link it to a different page on our website or you can link it to another website, an anchor point. You can make it top or bottom of the website. So if someone clicks the image, they're gonna be scrolled up to the top of the website or the bottom of the website. You can have the image be a button for downloading a file, an email, phone number, light box, and so much more. But we don't want to link this one, so we're just gonna go ahead and click that and nothing happens. We also have scroll behavior. It doesn't work on these study images. It's only gonna work for background images, uh, but scrolling images is basically when you're scrolling the website, the image kind of stays static and it makes it, looks like it's scrolling. Uh, it's a bit hard to explain, but you'll, you'll notice it once you try to use this feature right here. And then finally, we have some SEO settings. I'm not gonna cover it too much into depth, but it's pretty important that you describe what's in this image, just so Google can understand what's on the website and makes, uh, it, makes, it makes it easier for Google to rank your website for certain terms. So in this one, you can do like eyeball or eyeball test or whatever you want to do. Basically just describing the image. But with that being said, that's everything we got for images. I kind of want to touch on this one as well. We have focal point. It's not going to be too important for this specific image. Uh, let's see if we have a better example. No, we don't really have a better example. Uh, but just let's just pretend here. So focal point, what you can do is, let's say this was a full image with a bunch of different things on it, but we wanted to focus on one specific part of the image. We can change our focal point by just moving this little uh, blue, blue circle here uh, somewhere else on the image itself. So perhaps we wanted to focus in the corner of the image we can just drop it here and then the focus of the image would kind of move up towards that corner. But now there's nothing there, so it doesn't make sense. So we're just gonna keep it in the middle. But that is a super cool feature to use, specifically if you want to highlight a specific product or a person in an image with a bunch of different people and you wanna highlight one specific person, this is gonna be great for those specific purposes. 
Cool, once that is done, uh, we're pretty much done uh, with the images here. There's not much else I want to mention here. Everything else follows the same structure. You click the element and you can change everything that's on it. Uh, but let's say, for example, you wanted to remove something. How would you go about doing that? Okay, let's say if we wanted to remove something, how would we go about removing something on the website? Well, what we can do is actually just click an element. Let's say this text right here. If I want to remove it, I can just click delete on my keyboard or we can go in here. So the three little buttons, we can click on delete and now the text will be gone and everything will kind of move in place, which makes it look great. Now I can do control set again to go back. Now, if there's something you can't really find or is behind something, so it's hard to click, you also have this very useful feature up here called layers. So layers will show you all the different sections as well as containers throughout the website. So if I click this section, for example, this will be this section here. The next section will be this section here. And the next one will be this section. But if I wanted to remove, let's say this section here. So I wanted to remove this whole section. What I can do is just go here and I can once again, just go delete or I can click delete on my keyboard, which I will do. There you go. And now that whole section has been removed and all the content has been pushed up on the website. Same thing goes for everything else. If I wanted to remove something else, I can just go ahead and remove that as well. Cool. I think we've covered most of the basics of changing things on the website. Now, how do you go about adding something new to the website? So if you want to add something, you have this convenient plus button in the corner, which says add elements. So if you go ahead and click this button here, you can see that we have once again, a bunch of different options of things that we can add to our website. So some of the cooler features that you have available within Editor X is that you have a, a lot more features similar to what you would use on WordPress, for example, where it makes it a lot easier for creating grids, layouts, repeaters, light boxes. Well, light boxes aren't actually the, the regular Wix editor as well, but you actually have a lot more feature that helps you with the structure of the overall website. Uh, but in here, we have a bunch of different things that we can add to the to the page itself. So titles and buttons, video players and layouts and containers and repeaters and everything else that you could possibly need for your website. All of that is going to be available in this section. Now, how do you add them to the actual page? Well, it's not that difficult. All you have to do is just click or drag the element that you want and then just drop it somewhere on the website. It doesn't really matter. Let's say I wanted to add this paragraph text right here. I can just drop it and it will be right in this box. Once it's on the page, I can basically move it whatever I want, place it whatever I want. Perhaps I wanted it to be here on the side. So we can just add it here and then I can align this text perhaps in the middle if I wanted it to be. So we can go ahead and edit the text, center align. We can maybe change this box a little bit bigger. We can make it like this. And maybe I want to cop or duplicate this one. I can also right click it and duplicate. Let's see where they place it right there. So now we have two text elements. I can move it over here. So all of a sudden we have two different paragraph elements here on the website. And now we can make additional changes, changing the text and whatever, all the th things that we already went through. Now, if I wanted to add another element also on top of this, perhaps a title, I can add a title on here as well. I can do the same thing. If I wanted to align it in the middle, I can do so. I can also change it like this. We can make sure they are aligned. They don't want to attach to each other right now, which is fine, but at least they're aligned a little bit. I believe they're attached and they should be aligned pretty central. And then once again, we can duplicate this one. Control D is another way to duplicate. And then we can add the other one right here. Cool. So now we've added elements. Same thing it works the same thing with all the other elements on Wix. You could just go ahead and drag and drop. Well, let's say we wanted to add like another section here on the website. Conveniently, we have this little plus button here at the top, which will add a section for us on top here. So we can either add a blank one, we can add a grid or we can add a layout there. All of them have different features. We're not going to go through all of them in this video. Otherwise, it will be way too long. 
as you already seen, it's we have too many options. So what I'll be, use, what I'll be using here is just blank. So I'm gonna click blank right here and that adds a blank section. Now we can go ahead and change the layout of this section. So perhaps we wanna split it into three. So now we have three different kind of like boxes and all of these boxes we can add different things to. So we can add a title in this box and perhaps we want to add a video in this box and perhaps we want to add a, let's see here, let's say we want to add a social bar over here for some reason. And then this video, we want it to stretch. So now it's gonna stretch the whole section. That's super convenient. They didn't have that in the VIX editor. Uh, so now that's gonna stretch this whole box. Now we have the text here in the middle. Actually, I wanna move the social icons here. Let's change it so it's stuck in the middle. Perfect. This one as well. Cool, we can align that in the middle. And I also want to add this image or this video to this section as well, because I think it looks pretty great. And let's see if we can, I'm just gonna add the same video here on the other side. So I'm just gonna stretch it as well. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. A pretty good section that we created in a few seconds. So it makes it super easy. You can just create these things within seconds and have them ready. Obviously you wanna add some more things in here and you wanna change the video to your own video. You can even change the play button right here. A lot of different things you can do. So all the options are right here. And that is going to be the basics of changing content on your website and whatever. The second thing is you have multiple pages on your website. Where are the other pages? So the other pages will be if you click the button here at the top, you can see that we are currently editing the home page of the website. We have two more pages on our website. So plans and pricing and features and benefits. So if I wanted to change these other pages, I can just click those and that will take me to the second page and same thing as always changing the content on this page will be the same thing as all as before and if i wanted to change the content on the other page i can just go ahead and click that and i can change this content here now if i wanted to see our overall pages we can also click the pages here at the top right here we have additional settings for our pages so for the home page for example we can go ahead and change some more advanced settings about the page so if we go into settings we have permissions, so who can view this website or this page. We have our SEO settings, which once again is a bit advanced, but if you want to learn about SEO, make sure you watch my YouTube channel. I have a bunch of Vix SEO videos and they're all uh, similar to this. Uh, social sharing, you have advanced SEO. So you have a lot of uh, settings here that you can actually change for uh, each individual page and all the pages will have the same settings so you can just go ahead and change the settings for each individual page perhaps you have a page that you only want certain members to be able to access or if you want to add a password to a certain page those features are super beneficial now if i want to add another page to our website is just clicking this button here so adding a new page and then we can add a page or we can add a dynamic page but what we're gonna do here is just adding a blank page to start with. So we can just go ahead and click add. And we can name this new page. We can do who is Bobbin YouTube again. And this will be our new page here. So as you can see, we have the top. So the header of the website will still be the same. And the footer of the website, this one here at the bottom will still be the same. And the content that you add here in the middle will be what is different with this individual page. And just as before, you can change here your layouts of how you want to structure this page. You can add another section down below here. And then you can just go crazy with whatever you add here on the pages. So we can stretch this image through the whole thing. And then we can just go ahead and add a title here. And we can add a paragraph down here. This is really up to how you want to design the page. Now, let's say there's a specific feature that you're missing on Wix, which is kind of unbelievable to think considering all the options that you have right here. But if there is a feature that you're missing or that you want to add to your website to so a specific functionality, luckily you have the app market for Wix. Now the app market will be up here. If you go ahead and click on the app market, we will basically have similar options that you would have to your phone. I always say this example because this is the <laughs> most user-friendly way to say it, but it's just like adding an app to your phone. 
in here you have apps created by different companies some of them are created by wix themselves and all of these different apps have different functionalities that you can add to your website either by paying a subscription usually a monthly subscription or some of these apps are also free so you can also use them for free so if we go to popular this month for example we have a pdf viewer pro we have pokey which is a product importer federal reviews which i believe is just going to add reviews to your to your store hotels and airbnb map you can see there's a bunch of different options in here that we can add to our website so if you're looking for something specific just go in here you can browse through the categories or just search up here and then you can just go ahead and install the app by just going to it and then adding to the site so you'll get those additional options as well uh, just a quick recommendation here is that don't add too many apps it will make your website super slow so make sure that the apps that you add actually have value to your website don't just add everything because you'll think it look it looks cool on your website just add the things that you actually need to your page and now finally once we've made these changes there are still some features in here that you can have a look and learn by yourself but we have covered most of the basics we have some additional things that we want to change so if we go to our site settings up here we can see that we have some additional settings we can preview our website we can publish our website we can also view our published website site history so all the changes that has been made to your website if you want to go back to a specific moment because you totally ruined your whole site you can go to the site history and reinstate uh, at a specific uh, point in time you can rename the overall website this doesn't affect what users see it's just for you so if you have multiple websites on wix this will be a good way for you to just remember which one is which creating a new site you can duplicate a site you can transfer the site to someone else so if you want to send this website to someone else perhaps you created it for someone else you can just click this button to send it to them you have the upgrade button for upgrading to the more premium plans on wix we'll go through this in just a second we can also create a test site so the test site will be a separate version of your website like a test environment where you can just try new features or try new designs without affecting the main website this is a great way if you're going to make big changes to your website to have a test website where you test them first and then you can publish them live um, seo is just going to be your seo settings once again check out my youtube channel for more information on seo overall dashboard will just give you information about your website in general social sharing will just be for socials roles and permissions if is if you want to add perhaps you have a colleague or you have an employee and you want them to be able to change certain things on the website you can also add them here as well uh, this is going to be great if you have someone who's doing something specific uh, you can just go ahead and give them permission here uh, permissions per page is changing permission levels on each individual page so that's going to be in here and then you have manage site which is once again even more information so general info about the website this will be the contact email you want to use your address and so forth domains so the website domain you want to use for your website uh, if you don't know what a domain is is basically uh, the .com or .sc or .co or whatever uh, domain you want to use that's going to be your domain so you can have multiple ones and connect them to the main one you can have mailboxes through wix i'm not going to go through that at all actually you can you can set up a mailbox through wix if you want to yeah, payments notifications release manager customers manager marketing and seo and i'm just rambling on in here we also have view so we can change how we view our uh, website right here we have tools so if you want to add some big tools like multilingual so making your website in multiple languages you have the option here you have dev mode which is going to be more if you want to customize the code but if you're watching this video you're most likely not a developer so i would not recommend you to go in here uh, but if you have some more experience later on you can go into the dev mode and make some additional changes in the code of the website itself cool that is gonna be it so finally what we want to do is just go over and check out the upgrades and the plans that we have here on wix because i would want to make some recommendations depending on who you are and what you're planning to do so if you are using wix you are gonna to want to upgrade your uh, plan to a premium plan because if you don't do it you're not going to be able to have a full domain and you can't run your business on a free website domain it's just gonna look horrible it doesn't give any value to your customers at all and you will also have uh, ads on your website as well 
So make sure you get a premium plan. But which premium plan is going to be the best one for you? So you have website plans and business and e-commerce plans. Website plans is perfect if you're not selling anything on your website. So if you don't have an online store, if you do have an online store, the e-commerce plans are going to be for you. And if you're uh, an e-commerce store, I would recommend that you start with just the launch package. Uh, but if you're looking to upgrade or if you're already running an e-commerce store, perhaps on Etsy or something, but you want to create your own uh, e-commerce store directly because you already know that you will have a lot of sales, make sure you get the better packages because you pay less fees and you also have more storage and so on. But you can kind of read through here. But I always recommend that you start with the launch package if you're just starting out. Same thing goes for website plans. If you're just a small business or perhaps you're just hosting your CV or your portfolio, whatever it is, go with the essential package. This will cover everything you need uh, on your website. Uh, so this will cover everything uh, to all the basics. But now if you want to get the more upgraded packages, you can go ahead and do so. Uh, so it really depends on your size. But I would say if you're a bigger company, just go with a more expensive option. If you're a smaller company, just go with the essential one because that will give you everything that you need just to run your website and have it up and running. Um, that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, please make sure to leave a quick like down below. And also, if you have any questions about the different packages or any other questions related to Wix, make sure you leave them in the comments. Or you can actually join our Discord channel, which is a community for everyone here on the channel where we can discuss different things such as Wix. So you can ask people in the Discord channel as well for inspiration or help or feedback on your website uh, to get some kind of like additional input on on your work uh well that is going to be it for today's video thank you once again for watching and i'll see you guys in the very next video